again, uh, thank you to Dr. Bushra for uh, making this event happen. Uh, it takes a lot of effort, energy, and resources to put something together. And we all get an opportunity to discuss uh, science with each other, different uh, venues that are coming up uh, in regenerative medicine. Uh, actually, initially, uh, I was supposed to give a different lecture, but uh, Dr. Bushra said okay, we have to have an introduction. I have given this lecture before, so if it is a repetition to some of you, uh, I hope it will be a refresher for uh, those people and uh, uh, new uh, lecture for people who haven't attended this lecture. Organs and tissue, uh, their function is compromised. So what can we do to um, restart uh, those organs and those, uh, that tissue that has lost its ability to function properly? Uh, one of the things we can do is we can add different cells to that tissue. Uh, in the hope that it will, uh, it will uh, restore the function. However, it is not sufficient to just increase the number of cells in a particular tissue. The cells in our different tissue, they have a very specific function. So we need two things. We need uh, to increase the number of cells that have been lost because of disease or injury or a old age, but we also need those specialized cells that are present native to those particular organs. So here is what the, uh, here is when the stem cells come in. Stem cells have two uh, very remarkable properties. They have a uh, very high potential to make more copies of themselves. So that takes care of the first dilemma that we need to increase the number of cells in our compromised disease or injury, uh, cells have been lost from a particular tissue or an organ and now we have to, in order to restore the function, we were saying that we have to not only increase the number of cells that have been lost, we have to recover that, but those cells have to perform those specialized functions of the cells that were lost to uh, the incident disease or injury. So stem cells have these two very remarkable uh, abilities, they, can, they are themselves unspecialized. So you can think of these cells as they haven't gone to school yet, they are just in nursery. However, they can be trained to become a doctor, a lawyer, or a, or a policeman, or whatever you want them to be. So they are unspecialized, and because they are unspecialized, they can make many, many copies of themselves. Uh, actually, the degree of specialization is inversely proportional to the ability of a cell to divide. So very, very highly specialized cells, they completely lose their ability to divide. For example, neurons, they do not go through mitosis. So these cells are relatively unspecialized and which gives them the ability to make many copies of themselves. Uh, also, as we were saying that uh, these cells can adopt a specific profession if they're trained. So if they're given, uh, if they're put into uh, certain uh, physiological conditions, they will differentiate into a specific type of a cell. So now the, uh, the problem we were discussing that we have lost the number of cells and we need specialized cells that can be actually fixed uh, uh, if we use stem cells, uh, at least theoretically pretty much everything can be fixed this, uh, with this uh, technique. Uh, however, there are of course many impediments. Uh, we can discuss those two later on. But uh, you can, increase the number of cells in a damaged organ and you can have those, the replacement cells can adapt or take up the function of the lost cells. So when I first started working with stem cells, people used to ask me, it is so unethical, how can you uh, do something like that? So stem cell is a generic term. So there are many, many, many different types of stem cells. We will discuss a couple of them. Um, when Initially, people were talking about stem cells. It was assumed that we were talking about embryonic stem cells. Embryonic stem cells have a dilemma that they are taken from an embryo and some people, uh, uh, many people equate a fertilized egg as an individual life form. So destroying an embryo for the sake of extracting stem cells is unethical uh, if we talk about, if we think about that uh, philosophy. However, I would like to mention that now technology exists that you can extract a cell out of a blastomere, which is a slightly more developed uh, uh, embryo. 
without hurting that uh, blastomere, and you can actually, if you implant that blastomere, it will develop into uh, uh, into a fetus. So, anyways, uh, that is one thing. Embryonic stem cells. Why embryonic stem cells? Because uh, they are in a very nascent stage, and they have a far greater potential not only to make more copies of stem cells, but also differentiate into almost any type of tissue. This contrasts with uh, adult stem cells. They have relatively uh, lesser ability to make more copies of stem cells, and their ability to specialize into different cells is far less than uh, embryonic stem cells. One of, uh, another impediment uh, using uh, embryonic stem cells is, besides the ethical dilemma, is since they're foreign in origin, they will result in uh, an immune response. Your immune system will recognize them as a foreign entity and they will attack uh, embryonic stem cells. So you can actually uh, overcome that problem also if you uh, do what uh, cloning uh, basically is. So you take a cell, a, somatic, a nucleus from a somatic cell and inject it into a fertilized egg and now when you generate uh, an embryo, it will have the same uh, genetics as the donor. So just a uh, side thing that I wanted to mention. Adult stem cells, they are harvested from different niches of uh, different organs in a person. Most of our organs have a reservoir of stem cells and they, it, they, those cells from those uh, niches can be harvested. Now, Many, tissue, uh, many tissues have greater number of stem cells, for example, bone marrow or fat. So stem cells extracted from them can be used therapeutically. So there are, of course, uh, stem cells in heart and also in brain, but uh, because uh, a more invasive procedure will be needed to get those stem cells, so generally people take stem cells from uh, stem cell-rich sources, uh, as I said, uh, bone marrow and fat. So there is no ethical dilemma attached to using adult stem cells. Uh, they have, uh, as I mentioned, relatively uh, lesser ability to make more copies of stem cells and also differentiate into different types of tissue. For example, the mesenchymal stem cells you get out of fat or bone marrow, they will not easily differentiate into a neuronal tissue. So they, they have that. The plus point about these using these cells is, of course, if they are used autologous, they will not invoke uh, an immune response. So immune, they are part of your body, and the immune system will not react and try to destroy them. Okay, <clears throat> so best of both, both worlds, you can make custom make uh, embryonic stem cell like uh, uh, stem cells from an adult person. So basically. About a decade ago, I think, uh, a gentleman from Japan uh, discovered that if you use express three genes of core, SOX2, CMIC, and uh, KIF4, if you subject your cells to um, expression of these four uh, genes, they actually become, uh, they start behaving like stem cells. So what can we do with this? So if you take, for example, a somatic cell from an adult person, you can actually retro-differentiate in, in, into a, a, a more native, naive stage, uh, a stem cell-like stage. So then again, when cells become uh, transformed into a more stem cell-like phase, they gain those abilities, they become uh, undifferentiated, relatively undifferentiated, and they can make many copies of themselves, and then they can differentiate again, redifferentiate into a specific type of tissue. So that is uh, basically what IPSCs are. I think it, ha it holds a, a, a fairly good potential as far as for regenerative uh, medicine is concerned, but uh, many issues still need to be uh, addressed. By the way, not only you can do this, uh, generate uh, 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 IPSCs with the genetic ex expression of these molecules, but you can also use proteins directly to transform uh, a, a, naive, uh, a specialized cell back into uh, a stem cell. Umbilical cord drive mesenchymal stem cells. Currently, I think uh, IPSCs, I think clinical use is a little bit further in the future. 
but currently I think what uh, the type of cell that has greatest potential uh, in current scenario is uh, umbilical drive mesenchymal stem cells. Okay, so they are foreign uh, in origin, of course you cannot get your own umbilical cord, go back in time, but the, the point here is that even if you, if they are allogenic, these cells do not invoke uh, immune response because they uh, do not express MHC molecules that will activate the uh, immune system. So even if you use allogenically, of course most of them uh, are used allogenically, so they can uh, do uh, some uh, fairly good damage control. The reason, they have far greater ability uh, to make many more copies of themselves as compared to the adult, other adult stem cells that we talked about, number one. Number two, of course, because of that, they are relatively uh, far less specialized. They can also differentiate, they have a greater potential to differentiate into different types of tissue as compared to mesenchymal stem cells you will get out of fat or you will get out of, uh, for example, bone marrow. So <clears throat> this is one of the things, one of the type of stem cells you'll keep hearing about. And I think uh, in, uh, again, in present situation, I think we will see uh, more and more people go towards using uh, umbilical cord drive mesenchymal stem cells. 